Afternoon YouTube. Today on Ham Radio Basics, we're taking a look at station setup. What it takes to get your station up and running. So let's take a look on K5ATA Ham Radio. All right, so let's get started. Um, before we get going, y'all do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit like. Um, we do appreciate it. It helps the channel out a great bit and helps us create new content for you. So, all right, let's get this thing going. Okay, so one of the first things you want to consider is just your general layout. Now, I have, that's a 32-inch TV that I have hooked over to my monitor. And I have it that way so that I can see the logbook more easily and stuff like that. I also have another monitor right here that is monitor number three, technically. So that when I'm running my logging software and rig control software, I can have some data here, my logbook stuff here, and I can have other things here like maybe QRZ or something like that that I want to open and take a look at some things. So I have three stations available all tied into one computer. Okay, another thing you want to consider is rig positioning. Now, I have, this is the Kenwood TS480. It's the SAT model, so it's got the auto tuner in it. And the nice thing about this is it's, you know, not an attached face. I would say it's detachable, but, well, it's not attachable, so it can't really be detachable. But it's separate. It's run with a cable here, so I can move this around however floats my boat at the time. Um, whatever rig you have is going to change how you have things set up. Okay, you will need to have a power supply if you're going to run a radio indoors. So I have here, it's a trip light 15. I also have a really old Astron 12 amp. Um, this is actually the very first power supply I ever had when I became a ham. I got this to power the Yaesu FT5100 in my house. So it's, you know, 26? Yeah, 26 years I've had that bad boy now. So it's been around for a minute, okay? Um, depending on the rig that you're going to run, you'll need a different size power supply. Like I said, this is a 15 amp. That's a 12 amp. And then buried down in here, I have another trip light. That's a 40 amp. So depending on what your rig requires, amp amplifiers, stuff like that, that's going to make a difference on your power supply. I also have, this is under my cable mess, this is the Kenwood switching power supply that comes with, or it doesn't come with it, but it's one of the accessories for this radio. Um, it's still just a power supply, though. There's no special cable or anything like that. So let's take a look behind a power supply and see what that looks like. Okay, and this is the back of a power supply. It's pretty simple. Uh, most of them are gonna be very similar. This is your fuse, that's your power cord, goes to the wall. This is for your hookup, for your the wire that goes to the radio. Um, positive is red, negative is, or ground is black. And then that's the ground to go to your station ground. So you would have a short wire running from that to your ground plate that goes to a ground rod. Okay, so to hook these things up, all you do is you take a wire from the radio. Most radios have a certain power cord they come with, and you hook it up to there, and then you just plug it into the back of the radio. So let's take a look at the back of a radio and see what we've got. Okay, and what we have here is an older radio. It's an ICOM IC2100. I'm actually going to undo this microphone real quick to make it a little easier to flip around for you. And if you look at the back of it, need some cleaning. Okay, that is your SO239. That's where your antenna goes in. Okay, and it's just going to go from whatever, if you're mounting this in the house, that's just going to go from your external antenna um, through a coax, through the wall, however it is you get it to the radio, and you're going to screw that in right there. Um, I say external, for first antenna I ran was actually up in my parents' attic, and I had it on a cookie sheet stick sticking up, or the coax went up through the ceiling and it was on a big old cookie sheet just sitting up there and I worked most of Dallas that way while I was in college so I would most of the Dallas repeaters okay this is the power this is the pigtail that comes off of the radio 
most radios, this or most VHF, UHF radios, this doesn't come out. This is permanently in there. Um, this is a pretty standard connector here. And what happens here is this goes to a set of power leads that connect to the back of that power supply. Okay, this is actually the other end of that. And this goes to this trip light. This is actually normally, this is the rig I normally use as a base station. So this 15 amp trip light, this is the power line that comes off of it. Like I said, you can see it's just got a red and a black. And what these do, if this were it, you just put one in there and you cinch it down on there. Same thing here. Uh, make sure the power is off whenever you're messing with this stuff because you don't want anything to go zap. So before I plug it in. Okay, so that's the pigtail from that. This is pigtail from that power supply. And you can see they just, they only go one way. You can't really make them go the wrong way. So they just plug in. And then turn on the power supply. And there we go. It's alive. So that's all it takes to get a base station VHF, UHF radio on the air. Remember, I don't have an antenna tied tied into this right now. Um, the microphone's not in there, partly because it was in the way. The other part is I don't want to accidentally key up a radio without an antenna on it. Things go zap. So that's how you get a VHF UHF. Let's take a look at how to do an HF radio. It's not that much different. Okay, and what we have now is the Yaesu FT897. It's got the bolt-on LDG AT897 antenna tuner. Um, antenna tuners you probably are going to need one of these unless you're going to cut a dipole for each kind of sort of frequency you're going to run. Um, but this is a nice little antenna tuner. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to hook up a radio with this antenna tuner in place because the reality is you might have an antenna tuner. So let's take a look at the back of this guy. Okay. Looking at the back of it, this is a little bit different. Now here, okay, you have the Molex plug. This is your power cord. Um, it is different than the VHF UHF one. This has got six holes in it, six wires. Um, it tells you it takes 22 amps to run this guy. Oops, let me get that up. It tells you it takes 22 amps to run that. Uh, ground, same thing as the other one, just have a wire coming off of there. This is actually your cat control cable. So if you have a radio that your computer is going to control, that's where you go. Um, let's get to the nitty gritty. Okay, first things first, I'm going to plug that thing in. And that's all that takes. Okay, now on the back of here, we have a few more antenna connections than we're used to. Okay, you'll notice on the tuner, we have an antenna and a radio. Okay, and the way this works is you're going to have a piece of coax coming in from your antenna, your HF antenna, not your VHF, UHF antenna, because this radio can do both. Okay, so your your v, your HF antenna is going to come into here. Then you're going to have a short jumper cable that's going to go from this port that says radio. And it's going to come out and go into the HF antenna port on the back of the radio. Okay, so it's not that complicated. You have one extra cable that comes across and it's just a short little, you know, 12 inch jumper. That's only four or five, maybe six inches between those two. Okay, but that's all that is right there. So um, as far as getting this thing powered up, okay, it takes 22 amps. So you're not going to be able to run this off of that 15 amp power supply, at least not at full power. Okay, so that plugs in there. And I'm going to go ahead and take a second and show you how to wire one of these guys into um, a power supply. Okay, so here we are at the back of the power supply. Now, this is on the floor because, well, A, it's big, B, it's heavy, and C, it keeps my toes warm in the winter. All right, so the way this goes is this. Got your power line. This comes back out of the radio. Okay, this radio is fused. It's got two fuses on it. Okay, remember, turn your power supply off, which this is. Okay. 
and you're going to loosen up one of those lugs. Now you'll find if you wrap it around like this, so that the hook is kind of facing, I guess that's clockwise, or hooking to the right, or however you want to say it that floats your boat, you'll find that when you tighten this down, it doesn't try to ride out with you. So you just tighten that dude down there. Same thing happens here. Remember, black to negative, red to positive. Double check before you turn everything on because when it goes fizzle inside, you let out the magic smoke. And then you have a nice paperweight. Okay, and that's that. Now, if I were going to leave this hooked up, I would tighten those down a little bit better. But, okay, that's, that's how you get that hooked up. So now, let's make sure that this works. Again, I don't have an antenna tied into it, so we're not going to get on the air with it. But we're going to go ahead and power it up and make sure we're good. So let's take a look at that. Okay, turn on the power. Nothing went fizzle. With that all hooked up. There you go. So that works. You can see it's getting 13.8 volts. And this radio is ready to get on the air. All I need to do is test the microphone, test the antenna in the back, and we are off and running. So not that much different from a VHF, UHF. Um, it's just you need to make sure you've got if you've got that in tune, you've got the jumper cable and stuff like that ready to go. So let's take a look at a couple other quick little tips. Okay, just a couple little things you might want to consider when you're setting up your workspace. Um, obviously, you've got your screens, your laptop, all that stuff set up. If you're going to be doing little projects, you know, maybe a little kit building or something like that, okay, get you a decent little soldering iron. I've got a video on how to, or a few videos on how to solder. Um, I'll link those up above. Um, but you want to make sure you have space to work with it, most importantly. Okay, um, one of these mats, this is, it's actually like a craft mat that they use um, for scrapbooking and stuff like that where they take those little roller cutter things and cut across it. This is what I use for soldering on and, you know, you can trim coax and stuff like that and I've used it quite a bit and it they call it self-healing. I'm not sure how that self-heals, but I guess, anyway, it, it closes back up the cuts and whatnot. That's a really handy thing to have to protect your surface. Little pair of helping hands um, to make working on stuff a little easier. The most important thing is make sure that your shack is set up to work for you. Whatever it is that you're interested in doing, build that into your shack. Plan ahead of time and be ready to go with that. So that way, you know, you've got the space for it and you're not having to try to make things fit where it's not really designed to fit or where you didn't have it set up to fit. So anyway, that's the basics on how to set up your shack for your station on Ham Radio Basics. Um, any questions or comments, hit me up below. Hit like, hit subscribe. We do appreciate it. It does help the channel out. Y'all take care and we'll see you on the air. 7-3.